Hey guys, Casey Ferris here. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve here on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe for more of that. Today we're making pop-up graphics like this, blip, 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 in Fusion, and you can reuse them on your videos. Oh boy, it's gonna be fun. Let's go. Okay, so in the edit page, let's say you have whatever video you want. I just have a couple random clips here because that's not the point. The point is maybe we want a little subscribe thing to come up and go bloop bloop. And be like, hey, make sure to subscribe. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make a new fusion composition. I'll do that by right clicking in the media pool and selecting new fusion composition. And I'm gonna make this duration like six seconds or so, cause that's about how long I want this pop-up to last. Frame rate 24 is fine. I'll hit create and I'm gonna rename this subscribe. Now I can double click on that clip and that'll open up a blank fusion composition. First thing I'm gonna do is make a background node by grabbing this far left icon and dragging it down into our node graph. And I'm just gonna connect that to the media out. That's gonna give us a black screen, yay! The reason we start with the background is it sets the composition size so it doesn't do anything weird. And now we can build whatever graphic we actually want to pop up here. So let's say we want a little subscribe button thing, much like the YouTube subscribe button. Here we have some references. I'm thinking something like this, this red rounded rectangle thing. So what we're gonna do is recreate this so that we don't have to use an image file so we can save this out as a title because you can't save images in a title effect. However, to help us with that, I am just going to save this image to somewhere pro like my desktop and just drag that into my composition as a media in. And then I can bring it up and easily just be able to look at it. So we're gonna rebuild this with shapes and masks and things like that. The first thing I wanna do is make the actual button background, which is gonna be a red background. So I'll grab the background node here and drag it down. And with that selected, I'll go over to the inspector and I'll grab this little eyedropper and I'll just drag it over here to my left viewer and just pick that color. You don't have to be this exact, but you know, it's easy, so whatever. And I'll bring up my background in the right-hand viewer by hitting two on the keyboard. And now I need to make a mask. I'll do that by clicking on this rectangle button with my background node selected, and that'll make a rectangle mask up here in my viewer. And then in the inspector, I'm gonna go to width and height and just roughly size that to the size of my button. And what's really cool is because I have this in two viewers, it shows the outline of whatever I'm working on in both of these viewers, including right on top of this subscribe button. So I can actually adjust it to be the exact dimensions of the subscribe button. It's not really that important that you get this exact for this specific thing, but in the future, you might want to make something that is exact. So this is how you would do it. In fact, I'll hold control and zoom in on our reference picture here, and I'll go over to the inspector and right here where it says corner radius, if I bump this up, what that's gonna do is actually round this corner out and I can make that mm, about where it's supposed to be. Again, doesn't have to be exact. It's just really easy to do that. So now we have our background of our button. I'll rename this by hitting F2 for the goodness. and I'll call this red. Now let's do a similar thing for this white play button. Same thing, I'll grab a background, I'll make it white, I'll add a rectangle mask and I'll just zoom in here to this left-hand viewer, and in my inspector, I can move the center to where it's centered right there on that button. And now when I adjust the width like this and the height, then I can get that dialed in really easily. Again, same with the corner radius. Just boost that up until it looks right. Great. Now down in my nodes, I need to start merging these actually over themselves here. So we'll start with this red background. I'll move everything down so we can see it a little easier. Boop, it's background two. I'll hit F2 to rename. And we'll call this white button. And I'll merge this over our red background. Let's hit two on the keyboard on that merge. And this is what we got going on. Now we need to make that little red play button in the middle. There's a bunch of ways that we could do that. We could make another red background and mask it and put it over our white background. But we could also just cut a triangle out of this white background. So to do that, in my nodes, I'm gonna select rectangle two, which is the one that's giving us the shape for the white button right here. And I'll go up to our tool menu and I'll select this one, the polygon mask. And what that's gonna do is just add a polygon mask to our rectangle mask. And we'll adjust kind of how these play together here in a second. But for now, in our first viewer, we can actually just draw our shape and just straight up trace this. And there we have our triangle shape. Now I'll just take a look at our white button by hitting two on the keyboard. What we need to do now is control how these masks talk to each other. So masks that are stacked by default add on to each other. So what I'll do is select that polygon mask and go over to the inspector. And here where it says paint mode, I'll select subtract. And what that does is 
mask my background with the rectangle mask, and then it draws the polygon mask and subtracts that. So we have a hole in our mask. And now this is mostly put together. Let's grab that merge and hit two on the keyboard. And that's looking pretty nice. Now we just need to add some text. I'll grab my T icon for text plus, drag that down to our nodes, drag that there, and I'll merge it with our merge one. Now we have our text. In our inspector, I'll say subscribe. And I'll make sure to hit two on the keyboard for that merge two so that we can actually see everything. And now we just need to adjust our text. So font is probably Arial, if I had to guess. And we can move that around to be good and designy. So there we go. We have a pretty good recreation of that graphic, something like that. And now we've built this button just with masks and backgrounds. And we can delete our media in. And we have a little button that can pop up here. To keep us organized, I'm going to grab this, drag it up here maybe. And with everything selected, I'll hit Shift Spacebar. And I'll type UND. That's going to bring up an underlay. An underlay is just a fancy way to label a group of things. If I double click off of it and then alt click, I can just select the underlay and I'll hit F2 and I can call this sub button here. And I can take the output of my merge and merge it over our background here. I'll select media out one and hit two on the keyboard. And now we have what our final render is going to look like. Of course, we don't want it to be exactly like this. We want it to animate on and be smaller and have transparency and all of that stuff. So let's do it. First thing we can do is just grab our merge three and we can adjust where this shows up and how big it is in the merge. That's the best way to do it with a group of things like that. And let's say we'll just put this down in the corner, something like that, maybe a little smaller, keep it tasteful. So this is where I want this to end up. And I'm gonna have this show up in about half a second or so. So I'm gonna drag my playhead over to, I don't know, frame 12, frame 15, depending on your frame rate. I'll just do 15. And over here in my inspector with our merge selected, I'll click on this keyframe diamond because that's where I want this to be at 15 frames. And then back here at zero, let's say we just want this off screen. So I'll just push this center to the left. And now we have it just sliding on screen like that. And one thing I'll do is adjust that animation with the spline panel. The upper right hand corner, there's a button that says spline. If you click on that, it brings up your spline panel in the lower right hand corner. And what we're looking for here is merge three. I'll click on that and that's going to bring up all the keyframes and everything that exist for merge three. It's not going to show anything or make any sense by default. I'm not sure why they do it this way, but you pretty much always have to click this button right here, which is zoom to fit. And now we see that nice graph of what the heck is happening. I'll just drag and select whatever keyframes I want to adjust and I'll hit F on the keyboard. What that's going to do is smooth out this animation so that it kind of comes to a stop slower. It eases that keyframe. So now when this comes in, it's just a nice tasteful whoosh. Yeah, nice. So now let's say we want to animate this like somebody clicked on it, right? With something that looks like a button, you'll want to do pretty much two things. You want to make it feel like it kind of pushes in and then also just change how it looks after it's been pushed. So we're gonna do the push with just a scale. We're just gonna scale this down real quick and make it go bloop, and then we're gonna change its color. So there's a bunch of ways to do all of that. Easiest way to scale something's probably just with the merge node that we're already using. And so we'll keep it here for, I don't know, 45 frames or so. Then over in my inspector, here where it says size, I'll click on this keyframe diamond and set it there. And then we just want this to quickly animate and just go boop boop. So I'll move forward a couple frames, two or three frames maybe. Then I'll go back to my inspector and this size, I just want to size it down a little bit. So I'm going to grab the actual number and just drag it to the left just so it's a little bit, just a little animation here. So this is the difference. Just does that a little bit. See how that looks. Yeah. Looks like somebody pushed it, right? Click. Yeah. And then we want that to come right back up. I'll move a couple frames down. So I'm going to go back to my original size here at frame 45 and copy that as 0.38, move down. So this is the original size. This is where it gets smaller and I'll move back about the same amount. And again, over here in the inspector for size, I'll say 0.38. Squishes back up. So it just goes like that, really subtle. And once that happens, once it pops back up, we're gonna change its color. There's probably a bunch of ways to do that. An easy way would be with the color correction node. So I'll grab this color correction node right here and I'm gonna drag it in between this sub button and our merge right there so that it's color corrected before it's put on top of things. I'll go up here and close our spline panel. And in our inspector, before I do anything, anytime you add a color corrector node to something that has like transparency that is masked or anything like that, you wanna go over to the third icon 
and click pre-divide post multiply. What that does is make sure that this doesn't color correct everything in the world. It just color corrects what's being fed into it, which is going to be this subscribe button. That seems like something that should be like that anyway, but I assume there's probably situations where you wouldn't want that. So go back over to our first little tab in our color corrector and I'll scroll down to saturation. Move this over so we can see it. And what I'll do is just bring down the saturation so that it's black and white. And now that we have that, we're gonna animate the blend of this node, basically the transparency or the strength of this color correction node to come on right when this button comes back up. It squishes down. Let's say it turns, starts turning black and white right when it's down. Right there, that's at frame 48. I'm gonna go over to the settings tab in the inspector and here where it says blend, I'm gonna add a keyframe and I'm gonna turn that all the way down. So we're starting with it off and then I'll hit right arrow on the keyboard and I'll stop at the exact moment where this button grows to its full size and I'll bring that blend all the way up. So here's what's happening. If I go all the way to the beginning of our comp and play this back with spacebar. Yeah, it works, right? That's nice. And then maybe let's say at the very end, we want this to come off again. So we'll say like 125. I'm gonna go back to my merge three where we have our size and position keyframes all set. And again, I'll add another keyframe here under center in our inspector and move towards the end of the composition. And we can just slide this back out just like that. Same thing, I'll make sure I'll go to my spline panel, zoom to fit. And you know, I'll just select all my keyframes and hit F. That's going to make sure everything's nice and smooth. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, nice. So we could adjust the timing and everything for this, but you get the general idea. Last thing we need to do is make sure that this isn't on a black background, this is on a clear background. Easiest way to do that, just go to the background node, leave it black, but roll down to alpha and take alpha all the way down. There's our nifty little subscribe thing. Hey, nice. So let's say we want to save this for later. I'm going to select everything in this composition except for the media out. And then I'm going to right click anywhere and go up to macro, create macro. What this is going to do is make this into a title template, which is going to let us save this in the titles folder of resolve. And we can just drag this in to whatever project we want to put a subscribe button on. It's cool, right? Here we have a ton of different settings and stuff. We don't even need to mess with any of this. Just call it sub button at the top and hit close. And then it's going to ask if you want to save. We'll say yes. And I'm going to save this to my desktop. I'll call this sub button pop-up, let's say. And once that's done, we're going to do a couple things. And this is how you install any title. Um, titles that you download from ground control, titles that you download from other people. It's pretty much how you do it. I'll just save this and I'll close resolve. And you're going to want to go to this place on your system. C program files, black magic design, DaVinci resolve, fusion templates, edit titles. Okay. There's a similar place for Mac that those are supposed to go. I'll put those in the description. And what I'll do is just grab my sub button pop-up dot setting that was saved with that macro tool. I'll grab this and just drag it into that folder. It'll say, oh no, please, are you sure? And I'll say, yeah, continue. Then you can close that, restart resolve. So now that we're back in resolve, if I go up to the upper left-hand corner, and click on effects library that'll bring up my effects and under titles i can scroll down under fusion titles and i can select sub button pop-up i can just drag this on top of things but look at this fanciness boop yeah dude all right there are ways to adjust the timing here but i don't want to get into it in this video now if it doesn't animate out or if like it doesn't make it long enough for you to see the animation double check your user settings the upper left hand corner under resolve, go to preferences and under user, under editing, standard generator duration, make sure that that is longer than the title that you made. If it's 10 seconds, make sure it's 10 seconds. I usually set mine at 10 seconds and hit save. And then if it didn't work, you can just drag this in and it will animate out. So there you go. That's making a sub button pop up in Fusion. I hope that you enjoyed this. By the way, if you want to learn just about everything ever about resolve, we have a master training that we just came out with link right here. It's over six hours of training and we walk through a project together and I promise you will learn a just a freaking ton about Resolve. It's great, man. It's super fun. Check out our little promo for it right here and uh, maybe consider it. You know, love to have some fun together. Yeah, let's do it.